All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and use a self-hosted GitHub runner. And the reason you wanna do this is because maybe you want your actions to run faster, or maybe you want them to run for free. The default Ubuntu latest runner that you get with GitHub, eventually you run out of credits and it's not free anymore if the repository is private, but also it's not that big. So it could take a while to do stuff. So here's how you do it. First, you wanna to go to the organization where you want to be able to run this runner in. And if you go to settings, actions, runners, you will see here a list of self-hosted runners and GitHub runners. So you're gonna click, click create a new self-hosted runner. Then you will choose your platform. I'm on Mac OS, my architecture is ARM64. Then you just basically run all these commands in a terminal where you want the little program, so to speak, to B. So for this, I'm just going to do it on my desktop to show you. So you simply copy these commands. There's the first one. Here's the second one, which will download the correct thing for you to install and set up. There's that command. Copy the next command, which unzips it. And then this one is the configuration. So this is gonna ask you a bunch of questions. What do you want the name to be? Uh, I don't know, demo. Oh, whoops. It says, what do you want to name? Okay, <laughs> that was the worst thing to add. So it's gonna, you gotta answer these questions and most of the time you can just click enter, right? So default, what's the name of the runner? Um, demo, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. And enter again, cool. So now I have this, these files here and it's on my desktop right here. So you can install this on your, your, you know, your local computer and use that, or you can install it on a server somewhere. So the last thing you want to do is in order to use this runner, you just want to make sure that this exists in the workflow or action file that you're going to be running. So for this example, I will show you in this repository.github that we have. If I go here and I go to workflows and I pick a random one, we have this thing and here's this property. See under jobs runs on self-hosted. That is the thing that you need to change. It'll normally default with Ubuntu latest or something like that. So you just change that to self-hosted. Now there's one thing that you need to be also aware of is in your organization settings in actions runner groups, you have these groups here. And one of the questions in the setup was enter the name of the runner group to add this runner to. Click enter and it'll enter, add it to the default group. So you can see here my default group says that these runners are allowed to run in all repositories except public ones. So this is a public repository. This will not work. So what I have to do is either add it to a different group or change that setting. So for the purpose of this video, I will just change this setting. Did I not even have to click save? That's cool. There's my demo runner in the default group. So now let's try this out. If we go to the actions area in this repository and we go to the workflow, which is currently disabled and we enable it, let's see if we can run it on our new self-hosted runner. The answer is going to be that it doesn't work because the runner is not started. So let's try it. There we go. The workflow run was requested. And if you see right here, click on this, it's requesting a self-hosted runner and it's waiting for a runner to pick up the job. I don't currently have a self-hosted runner running. So anytime you want to use your self-hosted runners, you can leave it on all the time, but you know, sometimes you turn your computer off. What you do is you just go into the folder and you type dot slash run dot sh. And now you'll see it connects to GitHub and the runner is here listening for jobs. Oh, check it out. It's running the job now, create daily issue, which is over here. And now you can see that this started because this was listening for runners and this runner just came online. So now it's gonna use the power of my computer to run this. Uh-oh, it failed. 
It probably failed for a different reason though. Not because it's the self hosted runner. As you can see, it actually ran the issue or the, uh, the workflow. And since this video isn't about how to troubleshoot every single workflow problem, it doesn't really matter. It picked up the self-hosted runner and there you go. You even got some logs about it. So then you can just exit your runner and turn it off when you don't need it or keep it running forever. It's up to you. And that's really it. That's really all there is to it. So let me know if you have any questions. Peace out.